Hey, this is Matthew. Welcome back to Nerd News Today. And finally, it is time for our look at the New Japan Pro Wrestling figures from Super 7. It has been a long wait to get my hands on these figures. Highly anticipated. Easily for me, I think the most anticipated figures of all year, in fact, because I've waited for these for so long. They kept getting pushed back due to the pandemic and other reasons. But here they are, finally in hand. I'm so excited. So let's jump into things here today. And we're going to start things off with, of course, the Rainmaker himself, Kazuchika Okada. And just a heads up for you guys out there, if you're interested, I've already done an overview of all four figures. I've given my thoughts on all sorts of different points, including the price, articulation, all that kind of stuff, if they're worth buying more of. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check out the link right here. That'll bring you to that video. But this video here is going to be particularly just focused on Okada. So let's start things off here with the packaging. It's pretty cool, actually. It's a very large box, but it's pretty cool looking. You guys can see a nice big window here. I love the ring design that's on the front of the box as well. So you've got the ring and the turnbuckles. You've got a great look at everything that this figure comes with. With the exception of one important accessory, of course, and that's the IWGP Heavyweight Championship belt. That is hidden underneath his jacket. So we'll get a better look at that once we take him out of the box. But of course, this is not how the figure comes. No, in fact, if you actually bought this in the mail, first you would get this in a brown mailer box that has the New Japan logo on the front. That's there to keep your figure completely protected during shipping. It's there for your safety. So that's pretty much standard across all the board. Then once you take it out of the brown mailer box, you get what you're seeing here, except the difference is it's got a lid on it. And that lid has a metallic sort of reflective New Japan logo on it. Very cool. Again, doesn't give you a glimpse to the figure. Once you remove that lid, this is what you get here. This is what you're seeing right now. And that's the figure, well, I don't want to say out of the box, but essentially it already is out of two boxes. So yeah. But what did you get out of the box? Really nice looking over there. And you guys can see also on the top of the box here, it says New Japan King of Sports. That's really cool. The back of the box has the New Japan logo as well as the Super 7 logo on top. We've got Okada's name in Japanese as well as his name in English and also a bunch of his stats and his Twitter handle. Pretty minimal backing, but I think it actually looks very cool. I like it a lot this way. But like I said earlier, I already talked about the package in pretty heavy detail in that video where we looked at all four of the toys together. So if you want to see that as well as comparisons to other wrestling figure boxes, go ahead and check out that video. But hey, we're here to look at Okada again, so I think it's time to get Okada out of the box and into the ring. All right, and here is the glorious moment. Here is our Kazuchika Okada now out of the packaging. And I am impressed. So as you guys know, before these figures came out, ringside up a bunch of photos. They were horrible photos. They got everybody really off tilt. Everybody was very concerned about how these toys were going to look. Well, having them now in hand, I can say these are really good looking figures. So let's just start here with the entrance gear because, of course, all the figures come with their entrance gear. And it's amazing looking. Great detail all across the board. This really puts anything that Mattel has done to shame by a lot. I mean, we're talking soft goods here, but not just the normal type of soft goods. This is definitely a higher quality material for these soft goods. And, you know, Okada's jacket, it's very iconic. They had to work hard to really get the look for it. And there's a lot of more working pieces than you normally would see in a Mattel figure, but they really got it all. From the fringe to all the stuff on his sleeves. I mean, wow, it's, it's kind of breathtaking, honestly, how much they really put into this figure. The color looks great. It's really, really gorgeous looking. And just for a point of reference, by the way, I believe this is meant to be his Wrestle Kingdom 13 look. Uh, don't quite quote me on that because I'm not like the super duper expert. I wish I was on New Japan. If you guys know exactly when it's from or want to confirm that this is New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 13, just let me know in the comments. But yeah, this outfit is great. Uh, and, you know, in terms of posability within it, you still have a pretty decent range of motion. And as soon as you do that, by the way, you also see what's underneath the jacket because there's more hiding underneath it. So we have the gold chains, those gold chains that Okada is known for wearing as part of the entrance gear, as well as the IWGP Heavyweight Championship belt. So there it is in all of its glory. And I guess since we're doing this right now, you know, normally I talk about the likenesses first, uh, but let's talk about the belts because I'm going to probably take it off and mostly because there's a little bit of a green emerald in there. I'm going to take off that belt in a minute, but let's discuss these belts here. So I'm going to bring in just a few other belts and here is the AEW belt. You guys can see that. We just got this one recently. And also I'm going to bring in a WWE belt. This was one that came with the Ultimate Edition of The Rock. So here are the belts side by side. And as you can see, one of these things is not like the other. So the IWGP belt is really not quite as shiny as these. I don't believe it's vac metalized or whatever the technique is they're doing for it. It's painted silver and it's painted gold, but it's missing that metallic luster that these other belts have. And, you know, I was really, really looking forward to the belts. That might be one of the biggest letdowns right away with this figure is while the belts look pretty good, they're very basic. It's missing a lot of detail, I feel like, within the plates as well. Um, we'll check out the side medallions in a minute. But just initial reaction is it's cool to have this belt, but it's not what I wanted. So let's go ahead and get the entrance gear off of Okada now. Let's see how this works, in fact. Something I'm actually a little bit concerned about is how we're going to get this off, and more so how I'm going to get it back on. But here we go. It's our first look now at one of the New Japan figures without the entrance gear. 
put that over there. So this is real reactions, folks. I really didn't take much time to actually look at these figures too much when I got them. Uh, so here we go, doing the Rainmaker pose. So getting a better look at these side medallions, you know, they're they're okay. That's really the best I can say about this belt. That's That makes me kind of sad. Uh, I do like there's some nice detail work on the sides. You can see some little gold bits there. Uh, I do like that that's painted too. That's cool. And there is a little bit of a texture on it, but you know, I just, I wish it was shinier. That's really my big takeaway here is I wish it was shinier. I wish there was a little bit more of a luster to it because it just looks painted. It looks customized, really. It doesn't look like what we get with other companies. So let's go ahead and put these belts on his arms too. Just make it easier for me to show you guys what I'm talking about here. I mean, it's really noticeable, especially when you put it side by side. It's just, it's really missing something that makes it pop. Even with the gold chains too, you know, I get it that they're a different material. Painting them that way might be hard, but no, we've seen other companies do uh, a more metallic shine with these kinds of things before. I mean, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in even this figure right now. I'm gonna do an early comparison. Here's a, a Bandai figure from Saint Seiya. Look at how much more metallic it feels for whatever reason. And it's not a shinier material. It's just, it's just a different color that they're using and it pops a lot more. So uh, yeah, again, I'm, I'm kind of sad about this belt not being as shiny as I want it to be. So let's get the belt off though. Let's keep going with this figure here. And as I'm playing with it now too, I get a little bit of a sneak peek at that articulation, which is, <laughs> that's unique too. So let's get the gold chains off. And these are cool, by the way. Yeah, I, I like, do like the chains. It's uh, a very soft, rubbery kind of material. It does look good. So, you know, I'll give it that. I just wish it had a little bit more shine to it. And let's take the belt off, get a better feel for this. Oof, very stiff. I don't like that. Uh, that makes me kind of worry. Let's see actually if it does reattach easily, though. Uh, God. Mm, okay, it's going to take a little bit of work, but it looks like it should go back in. I might play with it a little bit more later on in the video. Not terrible. It's, you know, again, just a little bit of a letdown of that part. So now we have this Okada completely disrobed here. Let's talk about the actual figure, what's going on here. So again, a lot of surprises to me because I didn't really keep up the tabs what they were doing. And they didn't really put a lot of information out about these toys either as they were going along. So I did not know there was going to be kind of uh, toning on the body. You guys can see there's kind of like some gray tones. Uh, basically, see some, basically some shading that they put onto the figure. I like that. It kind of reminds me of uh, like the Toy Biz TNA figures, which I think are really underrated wrestling figures and one of my favorites. I wish I had more of them. Uh, that's really cool. And what it also does is it kind of hides the two tones because I imagine a lot of this plastic here is like different types of plastic. And uh, point of reference, I'm going to go ahead and bring in an AEW figure. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about the minute I put them down here. So you could see like his chest piece is a completely different color than this belly piece over here. So what happens when you paint it up like this and you shade it like this is it completely hides the two-tone plastic. That's cool. That's actually a pretty neat little thing. Now the question is how long is that paint going to stay on him? And I'd say fairly long because unless you're going to be playing with him and rubbing up against him a lot, you don't, I don't really think you have to worry too much about it. So that's a neat little thing. I like that. I'm giving him some points for that off the bat. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about likeness now with Okada. And I'm going to bring this in too. There are two different head sculpts here with the Okada figure. Uh, I think I like the one that I've got in my hand actually right now a little bit better than the ones on his head. The difference here is just the facial expression. They're very similar. They're very similar, but it's the mouth that's like really the biggest difference about it. Although I think the eyes are painted slightly differently on this head too. That's probably just because they're hand painted. Uh, the hair looks good in all of them as well. The hair is also actually, it looks like, yeah, the hair is also a little bit different, or at least again, the paint job is different. Uh, you know, looking at it from the profile now too, I think it's actually very good. Profile is very strong. Head on, I'd say it's probably like an eight out of 10. It's close, it's very good. I don't think it's quite 100% perfect maybe, but profile is a definite yes. That's absolutely Okada's profile. Oh yeah, totally from both sides. And uh, I think, yeah, more or less same from here. So this one might not be like the strongest, but it looks like Okada, it definitely reads as Okada. There's room for improvement, but I can tell that it's him right away. So that's good. And I love the fact that, by the way, there are of course two head sculpts. That's really great. I love that they included those in there. Now let's talk also a bit more about this outfit too. So you guys can see here, the elbow pad that's painted on. I think we knew that from day one though. That was never gonna be a separate piece. Kind of curious why they went that route with this figure. I don't hate it. I mean, we see Mattel do it too. So it's not a big deal. I'm just kind of surprised they didn't make it a separate piece, but maybe they were just trying to keep it in the budget and that was what they decided to cut. And if that's the case, not a big deal. So you guys can see, this is kind of like a sort of purpley color on this arm. This is kind of black. I remember watching the major wrestling figure pod when they did their uh, live unboxing of these toys and there was some discussion about whether or not the colors are accurate. So, well, here's a better look at it with some better lighting. You guys can see, you know, make your own decision if they're actually accurate to the event. I don't quite know exactly for sure, but painting wise, it's fine. Uh, and the outfit too, I think the outfit has a lot of detail painted onto it. And that looks really good too. And also very clean paint job as well. And same with the knee pads. I really love how the knee pads are all painted differently too. Uh, this brings us to the boots and there's a lot of detail in those boots. I love how good the boots look. Knee pads and boots, really nice. Very simple, very clean here. So yeah, 
paint job definitely giving it a high grade just on that alone. So let's jump into articulation, and that's where I think things are going to start getting a little bit different here. So if you're unfamiliar with Super 7 figures, they've basically been using this kind of same style of body for years. And that was the body they started using when like, they were doing the Masters Universe figures, because it kind of carried over. That was the Maddie Collector toys that Four Horsemen designed. And when Super 7 left to do their version of the He-Man toys, they continued using those same molds. So that's like their proprietary body now. So that's good, because you kind of have an idea of what was coming. But I was curious about what we were going to get ultimately with the wrestling toys, because typically they have a little bit more high articulation than what we'd get with the Maddie Collector He-Man toys. And unfortunately, I am sad to tell you guys that the articulation is identical to the Masters of the Universe figures. So what does that mean? Well, it's not necessarily a completely bad thing, but there's definitely stuff missing. So the head can go left to right, it's ball jointed. You can see the shoulders are ball jointed as well. We've got a single jointed elbow here. We've got wrist articulation. We have a buck that bends. We have a waist, ouch, that moves, that was stiff. We've got some leg articulation, it's pretty good. Uh, I've definitely seen better in other toys, but it's pretty decent. Uh, as I bend this, actually, I will say, I didn't know this, the material in his crotch piece, I don't really know a better way to say it, uh, his material, it's actually kind of soft. So it adds a little bit more flexibility. You can see actually there it crunches. That is really cool. That's like some kind of realism almost with the articulation. It's not quite like what Jazzers was trying to do with their UFC figures, the fabric shorts. That was a terrible idea. But what they're doing here, that's cool. I respect that choice. That's a good choice. Uh, I'm trying to get the thighs to move, and they do not move. And that's something that we don't have in the Masters Universe toys. I'm sad to see that missing here. Uh, let us try the knee. That is a single-jointed knee. You can see it right there. Single-jointed knee movement. And uh, the boot does not move either. That's a solid piece. All right. And we do have some, art some ankle articulation. So, yeah, it's identical to if you bought any other 6-inch figure from Super 7 before. You're missing a lot of stuff here with other figures, and I guess we're going to start doing some comparisons right now. So let's just do some comparisons. I'm just going to go ahead and bring in a stunning Steve Austin Elite figure. This came out very recently. Uh, I didn't review it on the channel. I just kind of bought it for myself. And I'm going to bring in an Ultimate Edition John Cena just to kind of give you a better comparison of what, like, the higher end articulation is. So what's the main differences between what we're getting now and what Super 7 did? Really, the main thing here... Uh, that's going to bother you the most is the thigh joint. That is missing. I think that's kind of important when you have pro wrestling toys. You kind of need that extra bit of mobility. Uh, and also, I think the boot joint being not there is kind of important too. Now, an ultimate addition, of course, has got even more articulation because you've got the toes that flex, you've got the double jointed knees, you have double jointed elbows. And I believe starting later this year, elites are going to have the double jointed elbows and knees as well. So, in terms of articulation, you are definitely missing some that you're getting with the Mattel figures. You know, it's that's a letdown, too, because this is going to basically be the body they're going to use for their Gallows and Anderson, for their Cardona and Myers, uh, and for New Japan Wave 2, if it ever comes out, and probably more wrestling figures. So I'm hoping that they will fix that as we go along. Maybe they'll improve the articulation, but if that's the case, it's going to be a few figures before we see that. And while we have them out here, I'm going to just also bring in an older WWE figure. This is a Jax, Ruthless Aggression, Chris Jericho. So clearly a lot more articulation there. And here's again, one more time, let's bring in an AEW figure. So AEW figures, again, light years ahead in terms of the articulation. They've got the more advanced torso. They've got the double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, the thigh cut, the bicep swivel. It's all there. So as you can see, the New Japan figures are not quite as articulated as some of their current competition, but they're not worse than like what Jax did. So they're kind of just in the middle right now. Like they're fine. It's fine. But I would have liked more articulation. But again, they were doing this in a time period when, you know, AEW figures weren't really a thing yet. And Ultimate Edition figures were really not even a thing yet. And I think also another point of comparison I want to make, as I just kick Okada's head out of the way, is the Jushin Thunder Liger figure from Storm Collectibles. And I wanted to show you guys how they size up, too. Jushin is actually a little bit taller looking, I think, just because of his mask. Uh, they are on the same level. I'm going to get them back. I'll get them back to back. But yeah, Liger is actually a little bit taller than Okada. That's kind of weird, too. Might just be because of how they're standing, but yeah, that's how these two guys look together. But they are more or less the scale, so you can actually have a match them together. You can do some figure photography that way. So what else does Okada come with? Well, like every single character in New Japan, he comes with 12 hands total. He has six different sets of hands. You've got the two you see on him right now, and then there's five additional sets of hands. And those hands are identical to every New Japan figure. And in fact, they're all painted identical. But yeah, basically the only difference would be Will Ospreay's hands. Everybody else has got the same skin tone on them. And that's fine. I actually think it's really cool that they're including that many hands in them. It's actually quite a bargain when you think about it to get that many hands. But of course, there is that one pair of hands that is taped and unpainted, and it's kind of weird. But again, that's just because they're recycling everybody's hands. And then the last accessory we have to talk about is Okada's money. So when they originally showed photos of these... And the last accessory we have to talk about is Okada's money. So when they showed like 3D renderings of these, it looked like it was going to have actual imagery on them. 
And then we got them in hand, and they look like blocks of garbage. These are terrible. I kind of just wish they weren't included. Uh, I mean, it's cool that they're there, but but they're really bad. You can't really see much of the detail on them because there is some there. I think it's actually sculpted. I can't even tell if it's a decal or what, but it's so thin, so minimal. It's just not even worth it. I don't know why they didn't just put a little bit more effort into that, especially if they're going to include something as small as that. You know, you got to put in the detail if you're going to do it. So here's a few photos of Okada in action with those different hands again, just to give you some more ideas of how he looks. But overall, final thoughts on Okada is, uh, you know, a little bit of a mixed bag. I think I like these figures, though. And I like the fact that you are getting a lot of accessories. Again, we talked about those 12 hands. We have the IWGP belt. We have the chain. We have the robe. We have the separate head. If I ignore the money, which I'm going to do, I think you still get a lot of bang for your buck out of this. Articulation-wise, there's definitely some things I want them to do differently. Hopefully, they'll get the message and improve them. I don't know. That's going to be a long time coming if they do that. It would have been cool if Okada's second head had maybe a little bit of a different facial expression because they are so similar. I wouldn't have minded one where maybe he looks like he's wrestling or he's kind of grinding his teeth a little bit. Just looks like he's actually in action and not kind of just standing around like he is. Detail is great, though, otherwise. Paint job is good. I like the knee pads as well. I know it's a weird thing to say again, but I like those. I like the crotch piece being the way it is. That was a big surprise. For 45 bucks, is it worth picking up? You know, I'm going to talk a lot more in depth about this in my other video where I look at all the figures and uh, I've got a lot to say about that price point. So make sure you watch that if you want to hear more about it. But I will say, I think 45 is a fair price. And there's not going to be a ton of merchandise like this out there. So if you want to get a figure of Akata, this is going to be the way to do it. The pros absolutely outweigh the cons, and the cons aren't that terrible. They're definitely not enough for me to say don't buy this figure. As much as I would have loved to have the championship belt be a different color and be shinier, as much as I want the head to be a little bit different, as much as I want the money to be a little bit different, as much as I want the articulation to be a little bit improved, they're all kind of minor in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, it's not a perfect 10 of a figure. It's not a garbage figure either. It's definitely not middle of the road either. On a scale one to 10, I give this an easy eight for sure. So, you know, it's pretty good. And I'm hoping that Super 7 listens to the fans and makes some changes as they go along. So that's our look at Kazuchika Okada from New Japan Pro Wrestling Series 1 by Super 7. You might be able to get some from Ringside Collectibles still, or a few other websites out there that might have these guys. Otherwise, if you missed them, off to eBay you go. So I'm Matthew, thanks for watching, and stay tuned. We've got a few more New Japan figures to look at as the week goes on. And if you're new here, make sure to check out some of the other pro wrestling content that happens here on Nerd News Today.